So, apparently, I need some washing and bathing and stuff. And Pete found some stuff on my beard, the owl. He likes. Who is he? And this guy right here who we found uh, tied up to that tree in Ometepe. Took us about three hours to get to where we at. And uh, we might go on a Mission Impossible mission tonight. But See this color? See this color on this monkey? We already loosened it, we did. And maybe tonight he'll be free. Free monkey! Lots of stories in the world. Some are happy, some are not so happy. This one, although it doesn't look like it right now because of this chain, tied all the way to that tree. This one is kind of happy because we stayed across the street, that street over there. There was a house there. We stayed with a local family and we were telling them about, oh, we worked at the rescue center and we do all this stuff with the animals and la 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 and they're like uh you want to see a monkey on a chain there's one across the street and we're like dang okay it's on <laughs> it's like some, donkey Kong. there's a monkey across the street so we came in and we saw him the first day he was pretty uh, aggressive um and slightly neurotic he had like some rocking and stuff like that but he definitely was curious so what we decided to do two days ago or was that yesterday oh no yesterday. yesterday we came and sat with him the day before we left we're leaving for this like morning three hours that was longer i think just sat with him got to know him let him touch us like little by little yeah he was trying to rip off ozzy's face at yes. one point it was kind of scary um but little by little we got to know him and um our intention was that he could trust us so that uh we could move him and what we did was yesterday, uh, little by little, when he was in my lap, I undid his collar. There's a collar back here. And we wanted to let him go in the middle of the night. However, knowing that that wasn't necessarily the best situation for him, because it'd be good if he had friends, we also decided to research what other options we have here on Ometepe. Ometepe is a volcanic island in Lake Nicaragua. Beautiful island, beautiful energy, lots of great stuff to do here. And actually, uh, people are quite committed to protecting wildlife. So we found a local man who just actually, in kind of his spare time, takes in these monkeys and rehabilitates them and then lets them go again. We thought about taking him to the rescue center near Managua, but that would be such a trauma for him. And he'd end up in the cage and la la la. So we just thought, why not contact this man? So we're waiting this morning for this man to come by. We're gonna bring him to the man's house. The man's gonna get to know him. He's gonna have him off a chain in his house to begin with. He has experience. And he's done this with plenty of monkeys. And then in time, he's gonna actually let him go uh, based on our little friend's comfort level. And um, he's gonna be integrated with a group of semi-habituated white-faced capuchins that live across the road. Little friend. Apparently, I need a manicure. See. And just a note to the watchers. I mean, it took a lot of time to get um, to where I'm at right now. And even here, I try to make sure that I'm staying aware because, you know, there is some pretty big canines over there. And because he's being tied up to this chain, anything could change his mood to wanting to be with me to all of a sudden just you know, reacting not personally towards me, but just reacting to whatever might disturb him. So something could happen to him way over there. There could be a loud sound and if it sets him off in the wrong way, he could theoretically in his outburst hurt one of us. 
and primates have been known to do that. So, and again, these animals are not good pets because they, like most monkeys in this condition, most likely his mother was killed because no primate mother is going to just give up her baby. And he was taken when they're very young, they're very adoring and beautiful and they want to love you and it's super good for your ego. But then what happens is they get bigger, they get determined, they have their own agenda, which is probably different from your own. Like a teenager. And they start to make a mess of things. They do have big teeth that they can bite you with and that happens a lot with monkeys and then people don't want them anymore. So they, they're not good pets. They become psychologically unhinged. When Ozzy and I found him, he was actually rocking like a maniac, like he had a neurosis. And then again, he just jumped trying to rip my face. This chain, save this moneymaker that makes no money but now it's gotten used to us and with a lot of patience and just kind of talking to him and um, Monica and I grooming each other acting like monkeys digging in the ground making funny sounds he realized that we're kind of cool and, and so that now, he can trust us and we also let him go at his own pace to touch us or to get comfortable with us we didn't manage we managed the situation in so much as we kept ourselves safe but we didn't manage or dictate to him how to behave with us we let him make all the decisions so that he could feel comfortable and every time that we approach him we approach him as if it he's was the here. first time speaking of wish looks like he's here so we're gonna go ahead and start this process and hopefully get him free today Te enojado con esto. Sí. No, 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 because there's a lot of people around, he's unfamiliar with the situation, he probably doesn't feel so safe. But it's all a part of the transition, it happens in transitions. This is the process in which basically he's trying to gain the monkey's uh, trust in order to, to be able to bring him with him. After all, he's going to be with him until he can be introduced to, to a group that is actually nearby in the island. So it's important that he um, gain some of his trust at least, which takes a little bit of time like we were talking about earlier. Okay, this is the moment of truth for our little friend. We're gonna take him on this chain to the man's house, to Jorge's house, and they can hopefully continue their relationship there. They will continue their relationship there. And we're gonna escort him back to his life in the forest because that's where he should be. Every monkey should be free. I'm tired of monkeys This monkey moment to me is also very important because anything could happen and now I don't have the escape of his, uh, the length of the chain for me to get away. That's true. Our only course of action, if something were to happen, but I feel sufficient in our little bond with him, would be that um, we'd have to be aggressive with him, actually, to protect ourselves. But I feel like that's not going to happen, really. So let's sit here for a minute with him. Now we're in a moment of convincing him that it's okay to come with us, even though this is something new and different for him. And he kind of wants to run away, but we also want him to come with us and him know that it's okay. Get him out of the tree. 
complete. Now we're riding towards, uh, what's the full name of the place again? Santo Domingo. Santo Domingo, that's the, the place where this man resides and where he can uh, hopefully integrate him back into the wild with an actual group of uh, capuchin monkeys that live in the area. As you can see, he's pretty curious and kind of embracing to Monica because it's the only thing that he knows is safe at the moment. Um, I his chain on so that we could have a little bit of manageability with him if we needed it. But he's so out of his element now. It's funny when animals are captive, like when they leave their captivity, they get freaked out and sometimes they want to go back even though they're not free. So when we cut his chain, he was a little freaked out and we kept the chain on so we could have some management over him so he wouldn't just run away. Safety, always. It was necessary for me to wear this just in case. Because you want to take care of yourself, you want to rescue the animals, but you want to do it in a you. safe way for yeah. them and for yourself. And it's not necessarily like they want to hurt you, they just get really scared and they don't know what else to do. Imagine at five months old, your mom being killed and being transported one place to another to another. It's rough, he's only two years old, maybe three at the most, he doesn't know what's happening. He doesn't know ultimately that we want to help him. Place of the tree now! So now we're trying to find a place on this property to keep this monkey for a couple of days, possibly chained up so our friend Jorge can get to know him. No, um, He's a super agitated right now because there's lots of kids around and he's just trying to find out where exactly he is. So Ozzy's leading him on his chain very delicately, letting him decide to follow instead of forcing him to follow. And um, we're trying to find a quiet place to put him while our friend Jorge gets to know him a little better and they can develop. Uh, what's happening is we're waiting for Jorge to return. We have him chained up to the wall here because there's a lot of little things for him to play with on the other side of that window. There's people in there and he's already overstimulated. So instead of stimulating him more, and instead of trying to, quote, force him later on to do something, if he's doing something we don't want him to do, we just have him tied up now and he can kind of chill and get used to this scenario. Unfortunately, there's a crap load of people wandering in and out of here, which doesn't really make it best. But then again, you can take this opportunity to educate him on how to approach an animal that is being rehabilitated. You're right. There's a positive side to everything. I heard that somewhere from a hippie or something. The reason why we want him to get used to this spot is because in time he's going to be reintroduced to a little spot across the street where there's already a lot of capuchins and instead of throwing him right in there, we want him to do it at his own tempo, his own speed. So right now we are getting him used to this area as a safe area so he can have a place where he feels safe. If he wants to come back here, he can come back here. And uh, yeah, that's why we're doing this right now. And you can already see he's very relaxed. He's not on guard and just kind of chilling, laying down, enjoying this lake breeze. He's definitely already in a better place. did is we saw a monkey on a chain in someone's yard and we started talking to people and seeing what we could do and what we and granted we were really fortunate we found people who didn't really want this monkey first of all because it is a lot of trouble to have monkeys and they did feel like it wasn't the best life for the monkey and we also found Senor Jorge El Poeta of Omotepe that likes to help animals he'd never taken care of an adult capuchin before so he was a little bit scared and he did get bitten. But everyone has a different Lightly. approach and it'll help him in the future if he saves more adult capuchins. And um, and yeah, little Valerio will get to be free. Foraging, hunting. 
and he loves ants. He's been rehabbing monkeys for many years. Across the street there lives a group of white-faced capuchins that are semi-habituated and the idea is to integrate Valero into that group extremely slowly and at Valero, Valero's own pace um, so that he can be off that chain. So in the meantime what's going to happen is he's going to be chained up in here for maybe two or three days just while Jorge gets to know him and then we'll move him off the chain or Jorge will move him off the chain and then let him be in this space without the chain. He has this space for about a week and a half before the kids come because this is actually a school. And um, you can feed them and they can sort of cement their bond. And then in time, the idea will be to start letting Valero out slowly, slowly, a little bit every day. And then one day he might choose to go out on his own and not come back at all. So primate rehabilitation can be quite sensitive because they are as dynamic as we are. They have all the same emotions. They might feel left out, angry. They might hold things inside and then get really mad later on they're like little kids with all their same emotions so we just want to make sure that he's gonna be in a place that's safe and that he can express himself and then in time as he becomes comfortable the need to lash out will become less and um, he can again be a